What's up, everyone? Welcome to Mindset Monday. And the question I've got for you today is how do you heal the wounds that are keeping you stuck and unhappy? All right. Now, my name is Adam McKenzie, and I literally work with busy women and busy moms all around the world and have done for 24 years when it comes to helping them get in shape, when it comes to helping them break the patterns that have been keeping them stuck, that have been keeping them frustrated and unhappy and ultimately not looking and feeling the way that they want, all right? And for a lot of people out there, they try and put Band-Aid solutions in place. They try and just do a different food plan or they try a different workout or I'll go to another program or I'll keep looking for all of these quick options because ultimately I'm sick of feeling stuck. I'm sick of feeling unhappy. I'm sick of being in pain. So let me look for whatever I can to get me out of the state. Right? Because they're almost desperate, like they're so tired and exhausted of feeling a certain way that whatever might come along that will help or relieve that in any way, that's what they're attracted to. Okay, And what I want to dive into is really the core of why you even ended up there and then what to do about it. Okay, Because living in awareness is painful, right? but all things start with awareness. If you're not then able to know what to do with that awareness, then you're going to stay in pain. It's like somebody admitting that they're overweight or they're unhappy, but then they don't talk about what they want to do to move away from it. They don't have a strategy or a process to change that outcome. So all of their conversations, all of their thoughts, all of everything that they're doing is based around this awareness of they're overweight or they are unhappy. All right. But I want to flip that for you guys and arm you with some things to get out of that as quickly as we can. Okay. So. One of the things that we want to do from the very beginning is we want to recognize right, what your triggers are. And that might not be easy for you to do in the beginning, right? Because for a lot of you, you might not even be aware that you are being triggered, okay? But if there's something that you feel, right? You get that sense of anxiety, you get that sense of frustration, you get that sense of angst and internal conflict, I guarantee you it's attached to a trigger of some sort. If you get snappy, if you get overreactive, if you unjustifiably raise your voice or yell at somebody or get almost pissed off instantly, again, it's going to be tra- attached to a trigger, right? And when I can get awareness, like I talked about in the beginning, about what these triggers are, then I can now look at what's behind them and then I can create a different outcome. All right, but if I'm not even aware of what I'm doing, I can't then take responsibility for the fact that I, I don't want those things to continue because I want to be in control of my reactions, not let everything else control my reactions or everybody else dictate my reactions. So I've got to first gain awareness of what they are, right? So if you're not aware, just get a pen and paper out. Play it like a game, like a literal exercise. Just write down like, what are some of the things that piss me off? What are some of the things that give me that feeling that you know, when I want to do something, I'm like, oh, what is that? And for some of you, it's it's change. For some of you, it's doing something with doubt and uncertainty. But some of you, it's going to an environment where you feel like you're going to be judged, where you feel like you're less or you don't know what you're doing or you're embarrassed or all of these things will become huge triggers for you, right? But some of you that, that will often wear the label of, you know, being depressed and on depression medication and everything else. What are the triggers that that make you feel that way, that make you go down that deep, dark rabbit hole that, you know, gets you to that state of of feeling depressed, all right? And just write them down, write them down, because at this point, that's all we want to do. We're going to get them out, okay? And when you can do that, then we can look at each and go, okay, cool. Here's my playing field, right? Here's all the things. And for you, maybe there's 10 things. For some of you, maybe there's three. Some, maybe one, right? I guarantee you there's more than one. I've known most people for a long time, there's always more than one, right? But what we need to do now is we need to really have a look at, okay, cool, what's attached to that? Like, where does that pain come from? Where does that reaction come from? Where does that feeling and emotion come from? And what I can tell you after doing this for a very, very long time, all right, both in the transformational space, as well as in the mindset space, as well as in the business space, okay? It tends to come down to two core beliefs, all right? You're not loved, I'm not good enough, all right? There's a couple of core limiting beliefs that most people battle with, but I would say those two are probably the two biggest that pop up in almost everybody's life at some point. And I tend to find with the women that we've worked with, sometimes they deal with both at a very significant level. 
either because of their childhood, either because of their current relationships or their past relationships or whatever it might be, right? Everybody's story and journey is different. But when I can gain awareness of the fact that, you know what, I don't currently love myself. I have no level of self-love, right? I don't then feel worthy as well to be able to receive love, to be able to achieve what I want, to be able to feel any differently than I feel now because this is all I've ever known, right? Or this is all I can remember because it's been so long since things were different. And when that happens, right? Again, you gotta understand that that's like, that's like the foundation to your house, right? And everything that you're doing, everything that gets built upon that comes from that foundation, stems back to that foundation right? Your triggers, your results, your actions, your self-talk, right? Your participation and whatever you're doing, right? All comes back down to those core foundations, right? And when I can unlock where that pain originates from, like what caused me to feel that way? Was it that I didn't get enough attention? Was it that I was never told I was loved? Was it because I grew up in a domestic violence you know, relationship or family situation or whatever it might be. Again, everybody's story is different, right? It's not about that. It's just about recognizing where that pain might come from for you. Because again, like I don't want to give you a band-aid solution, right? I don't want to just go, cool, go do this because it'll make you feel better for a little while. But that foundation is still there. That rocky, broken in some ways, self-limiting foundation is still there. And it's going to dictate everything. Right? It's going to dictate absolutely everything in your life. Triggers is just your way of knowing that those things are on very shaky ground. And they have been for a long time because you haven't addressed them. So your triggers here, right? You haven't healed from where that pain originated from. And again, like I called this entire episode, right? Healing the wounds that are keeping you stuck and unhappy. I can't heal them if I don't know where they originated from. If I don't know where they came from and not everybody's going to come from their childhood. Not everyone's even going to necessarily be in, you know, copious amounts of pain. But what I found for most people is if there is a limiting belief that is dictating a lot of what you're doing, if you have a lot of triggers, if you are feeling stuck and unhappy, it all originates back to that rocky foundation. All right. And when I can unlock where that pain comes from, cool, I can recognize it. Right. And then we can do what I'm going to talk about at the end of today's episode, all right? But before we can even do that, we need to make things now practical because getting to the awareness of all those things, it's gonna be emotional. It's gonna be painful. It's not gonna be easy. That's why a lot of people don't ever know it because they're not willing to go there because those places take you to a space that is uncomfortable, that is painful, that is disturbing for some of you. For some of you, it's, it's new. Right? You've just never been there, right? which is going to bring up more emotions as well. So in order to move away from those, in order to make sure that we can heal from these things, sometimes we need to leave the emotions where they are and just accept them for what they are right now. And then we need to make things practical so that we can move past them, so we can move forward from this level of awareness. right? And it starts now with getting clear for you on what has not worked. And it's funny, like I can always ask somebody like, what do you need to do to succeed? Or what needs to happen in order for you to create the end result? And most people can't tell me, right? Most people can't articulate what that is. And it's because I don't think they've ever gone through it enough times to work out what that process looks like for them in order to be able to create that outcome. But they're not even clear on it or they haven't done it so they can't even see it, right? Because they never got past that stage. And again, there's no issue with the fact that you don't know what that looks like, right? It doesn't mean that you're any less or that you aren't able to do this, right? But the reason why I ask the question this way around is because so many of you aren't able to see that or articulate it, but you're able to tell me everything that didn't work because you have so much clarity around that because you've been beating yourself up about it for so long, right? Like, you know it. And it's so easy because I'll always know that I'll start a conversation with a client. I won't even ask what isn't working and they'll already boom, start telling me. So tell me everything that didn't work, why it hasn't worked, why it couldn't work, everything else, boom, just literally spews straight out. Okay, because that's what's been consuming them over and over and over again. So I know that you can get clear on what that is. I know that you already know it, all right? 
what we want to do now, all right, is we want to get clear on exactly what those practical elements were so that we can flip them around, right? And again, it might be a matter of listing these things out. Cool, what didn't happen and why didn't happen and what's the opposite to that? So if I didn't get up in the morning, get up in the morning. If I didn't organize my food, organize my food. If I'm making excuses because I'm too tired, start making excuses and survive on the sleep. Right? You might think I'm joking, but like it needs to be this practical because at the end of the day, if I keep trying to change, you know, my end outcome, but I'm still dealing with the same pain, I'm still taking the same same actions, I'm still trying to do everything on top of this rocky foundation, and then I'm gonna expect a different outcome, right? This is the reason why you feel so unhappy and frustrated with yourself. Because I want this, I'm doing this, so I stay stuck in the middle of both. Right? And this gap is what's keeping you in pain. As human beings, we don't thrive in in-between spaces, in limbo, in a, a vortex of basically never going anywhere and just spinning our wheels. The other thing you gotta realize, and when I say you gotta realize, I, I would love you to realize, all right, is that you are not your results. Your actions dictate your results, but you aren't your results. Right? It's like somebody who's been bankrupt in the past or has done something, you know, something tragic happened to them or they fucked up in a really bad way, right? That doesn't mean that I'm that. I'm not a bankrupt person. I'm not this. I'm not that, right? But a lot of us attach ourselves to these labels. I'm a failure, right? I'm a serial this. I'm an emotional eater. I'm, you know, not a gym person. I'm a stress eater, I am a bad sleeper, right? Whatever it might be, right? You are not your result and you never will be. But until you're willing to separate the two, right? You're not going to see what actions you need to take to create a different result because you're attached to your result. And often you're attached to the result that you didn't want, right? So now you're trying to create new results, but you're still attached to this negative result. So how do I even have space to take the actions that I need to, to create the new result? It doesn't match up. And again, you gotta understand this, it's the approach that's keeping you stuck. It's the fact that I haven't put in the work to reveal and identify where that pain has come from in order to heal it, in order to get unstuck, and in order to make sure that I create outcomes that give me happiness rather than keep me in a state of feeling unhappy. All right, last thing here, and I referred to it earlier, all right, is at some stage, you gotta leave the baggage behind. My standards are higher. I'm not willing to settle for less than that. And that's all I want for you guys is I want you to be able to free yourselves from this pain, to be able to heal in order to move forward, right? Because when I can do that, you're gonna move forward lighter. You're gonna move forward with fresh eyes and a fresh perspective and a, and a fresh feeling of energy, right? To create the new, right? And what is the new? It's the new who. That's what excites me more than anything. It's the new who that we are going to be building. And when you can do that, man, it's gonna dictate everything that you get in your life. And that's what's exciting because all of this shit has been keeping you in pain. It's been keeping you stuck and unhappy. It's not serving you. So when we get rid of it and we do the work that we need to, to leave it behind, everything is new and everything is fresh and everything is exciting. Whether you believe it yet, whether you can see it yet or anything else doesn't matter. It's just the fact that that's the decision and the direction that we're going in. All right. And if I can help you with that, as always, email me, adam at ilovechanginglives.com. Comment below this video if you've gained something from it. And if you feel like somebody else would gain a lot from it, make sure that you share it with them and hit that like and subscribe button because I look forward to bringing you even more episodes every single week.